Well, first off, I have to say congratulations on picking and deciding what topic you're going to be debating in our upcoming debate. Whether it's debating if Andrew Jackson was a good president or if it really was Abraham Lincoln that was a cause of the Civil War, I am positive and I am sure that you and your group have the ability to research and find the facts to support your opinion and your argument. Lesson two is all about presenting your case. And in small letters I wrote, collecting and using the facts. So that's what this is all about, is how actually do you collect the facts and what sort of facts are you looking for and how do you use them? Debate preparation here. I mean, who thinks they can show up to debate without doing any background research and no and any preparation and actually do well and win? It's not going to work. You have to come prepared. So let's go over a topic example of a debate topic um, so I can teach you how best to go about researching. So let's say the topic is pizza is the best food on earth. The debate will obviously be about whether or not pizza truly is the best food on earth. Let's say that you and your group are on the side that says pizza is the best. So you are the affirmative because you agree with this statement. What do you think the first step is going to be to get ready for the big debate? Well, obviously it's to research information and facts on your topic. Because researching on your topic gives you the tools to show that your side is the best one and the other side is not the best one. So what types of things and topics or facts could we research in regards to the pizza topic? Pause the video for a moment and see if you can come up with different ideas that you could research. So please make sure, just pause it for 30 seconds. Brainstorm as much ideas as you can. Things to research that would help you show that pizza is truly the best food on earth. Well, hopefully you pause the video. So some different ideas that you could research are how many pizzas are sold each year. You could research the awesome ingredients used on a pizza. You could research also how many pizzas people eat daily. Remember, the research you do should show that your topic is the best one. Your research should make your topic look good, not look bad. While you're gathering information, you want to categorize, categorize your information in the following groups. First off, obviously you have the positive information and you need to show in your outline how that information actually helps you. Because that's the whole thing with the debate. You can have opinions, but you have to show how your opinions support your argument. You also are going to want to research negative information and how it hurts you. Because you're going to have an opposition, an opposing side that's trying to prove you wrong. And you want to know what they're going to say negative about you so that you can then take those arguments and prove that they really aren't that bad against you. So here's some, info, uh, some examples, I mean, of what I was previously talking about. So here's some positive information about pizza is the best. Each year, 3 billion pizzas are sold. That looks pretty awesome. But how does that help us? Well, it helps me because it shows that pizza is really popular. So no wonder it's awesome and it's the best food. You could also say that there are over 61,000 pizza restaurants in the United States of America. Well, that's great. How does it really help me? Well, because it shows that pizza is really easy to get. And if it's really easy to get, well, it must be the best food in the world. Finally, we could say that most pizzas are, have cheese and pepperoni. Now, this is a tricky one. Because if you don't explain how this helps me, your judges and your audience will be like, huh? Well, it helps me because it's made with ingredients that a lot of people love. Now, I said you also want to collect information that shows a negative side of your argument. So for example, people might say that pizza is fattening. Ooh. Now how does this hurt you? Well, it shows pizza is unhealthy. Now we have negative information. We see how it hurts us. Now we need to think about how can we counter this information so it doesn't seem quite as damaging against our argument. Well, we could say that 
people don't need to eat that much pizza to fill up. Therefore, it's not that bad for you because it's not that fattening. People also might say negatively against us that pizza can give you, oh, a tummy ache. Well, how does this hurt us? Oh, it shows that pizza can make you sick. How do I counter that information? Well, I can say that a person can get a stomach ache from any food, not just pizza. What I would like you and your group to do again is to pause the video for a minute or two, see if you can come up with negative information against pizza being the best food, think about how it can hurt that argument, our argument, and then how would you counter that information? Make sure you share that with each other. And if you want some extra gold points or experience points, come share that then with me, Mr. Volkman. So now it's your turn to actually prepare for your argument in our class debate. As a small group, you're gonna use your notes from the past classes, if you still have them. But remember, you can also go back and look at the flipped questions, the flipped homework, and the, flipped, uh, the flipped assessments for information as well, and also past flip videos to find information, to put in your, what I call the debate action plan or your outline, which you should have, to help show that your argument is the best. Now, in the rubric, you need to present at least three details to support your argument to get an A. But I encourage you to find at least five. If you're looking for five, that way you have five strong arguments so that while you're in the debate, maybe you figure out that one of your arguments just isn't gonna be strong enough. So at least you have backup. Now make sure to fully explain how your details support your argument. That's very, very important. Because if you don't, again, the judges in the audience are not gonna understand how those details show that, for example, Abraham Lincoln really was at fault for starting the Civil War. And make sure that your examples actually relate to your side. In a forthcoming video, I'm gonna explain how you can best mold your facts in such a way that they really are very persuasive. This is the end of lesson two. Please continue on with the quest.